Donald Trump, he hasn't paid any taxes this year. Well, that's because he collateralizes everything he owns. He just takes loans out against it. He doesn't sell anything. And he doesn't take a salary either because he doesn't want to pay taxes on that. So he just says, keep it. He doesn't want it. Right. And he just lets his things appreciate. And then he takes a loan out against them. Um, and his things continue to appreciate over time. Of course, not all investments for for every uh, thing a, a millionaire or billionaire own are going to do well. Some things will go down in value and get liquidated or uh, you know foreclosed on or whatever. But in, in general, th the best assets that we hope to be things like PulseX and Pulse and such on Pulse Chain, we hope that these things do appreciate over time. So now you introduce a lending capability into that where you can take a loan out against it and it becomes extremely powerful. You have less sellers. You have more people that are locking up an asset and not selling it, which is good for price appreciation. But they're still putting that value to work. They're earning. They, they, you've got a native stable coin that then becomes introduced into the into the ecosystem, which is um, very powerful for a blockchain to have its own native stable coins. Um, Ethereum kind of dominates the stablecoin industry at the moment. There are other chains such as Tron has their own stablecoin. There's some other chains that, that have th their own, but they're they're pretty rare. Most stablecoins are minted and created over on Ethereum chain. But now we have Pulse chain, which is fairly new, eight months old or so, with uh, three of its own native stablecoins. So you've got Coast, you've got the liquid loans, USDL, and now you have uh, the EARN protocol, PXDC. All within eight months on a relatively new chain, that's moving along quite nicely, showing that the, the builders on this chain um, are, are trying to build it out to be a powerhouse compared against the other chains, right? So th these are all very good things. There are risks to every protocol. Um, we're going to talk about some of that, but we're also going to talk about the rewards for using such a protocol. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's one of the most powerful things and, and why I like a lot of these protocols that are building the native stable coins, building the ability to, you know, the, the tools for people who want to do things with their money. Like, you know, I love staking, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like trading as much, but I love staking. I love, I love yield and, and farming to a certain extent, especially on, you know, on PulseX for Inc., for example. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're you, at a certain point in different points of the cycle and otherwise, it could be advantageous. Again, if you do your own research and, and figure this stuff out and how it works and the, the pros and cons and stuff, stuff that we're going to get into to use these more advanced tools, uh, you know, uh, that, that are at your disposal. So, not only do they lock up TVL, not only do they enable new features and utility in the ecosystem, advanced players who want to bring big money in need to have them. If they don't have them, how long are they going to stay? Are they going to come here and trade a little bit and leave? Or are they going to be able to lock it up, you know, hashtag never selling, all that stuff over a long period of time? That's what we mm -hmm. want for this ecosystem. So yeah. Um, just just on earn too. So let's look at these let's, stats. Let's look yeah, at these yeah. stats. Again, just the so the community is aware, like so there's 73. Um, 0.6 million dollars worth of PulseX locked up in these vaults. Now these people are putting that value to work. They're minting uh, 22 and a half million stable coins off of that. So it is over collateralized. There's plenty of value in the system. It backs every single one of those stable coins multiple times over. Um, so these, this is an over collateralized uh, protocol. And those people are now doing what they always wanted to do, and they're not having to sell to go do it. Right. So it's very uh, price positive, I would say, for uh, the PulseX token. And you basically on the collateral ratio, this basically, you know, the, the supply, uh, yep. this number equals the TVO, essentially. So the TVL is literally the PulseX value that's locked into those vaults. So the TVL is $73.6 million for the PulseX. Otherwise, uh, 885 billion PulseX uh, tokens. All right? right. Those are in those vaults. And then people have chosen to mint some stable coins against that same value. And they've minted 20, we'll say $22.5 million worth of value against that. And it could be, you know, uh, from 100%, I guess, what is the minimum 110%? 
A minimum is 110%. If you're like a real degen who doesn't care about losing your pulse sex, which there are some of those. There are people who collateralize at the lowest position because they just want to grab as many stable coins as they can and go farm with them. So, so on that, the, the risk there, if you do it at the lowest, if you're on, if you're in line for the lowest uh, collateralized vault, you are at the front of the line for redemption. For, for, for liquidation. For liquidation. If, if, okay. If, if you're down, if your debt position uh, gets down to 110% of what you've minted. So if you've minted um, 500 stable coins, but you've only got 550, um, dollars for the pulse x in the protocol you're going to lose that pulse x and and as such you're going to lose that extra 50 bucks right um so so the strategy there is to be as far along far in front of those people as possible however though what what if everyone just does like 200 percent? then it, even if you do 200 percent, you're still going to be well we're not we're not to the redemption piece quite yet and we're, okay. we're going to talk okay. about that. okay right. so so talking about liquidations you don't typically want to be liquidated, right? And it's fully manageable. Um, you can pay back your stable coins at any point. You can pay back a portion of them. You can mint more of them if the value goes up. If the, if you're like, oh, I feel like I'm over collateralized, let me mint some more. You, you're welcome to mint some more. Well, you can just, more just on that piece. I think it's interesting for people. So if the price goes up with PulseX, for example, you open a vault, price goes up, your collateral ratio, you you put it at 150 percent, 160 percent. The price of Pulsex goes up. Does that mean your collateral ratio is goes up too, and you can mint more yeah, from it? Absolutely. So if you wanted to maintain yourself around, let's say, one hundred fifty percent, and the price of Pulsex two x's, you'll find that your collateral health is now three hundred percent. For example, and you're like, wow, I got all this excess value here, but I really was comfortable at one hundred fifty percent. So you can mint a whole bunch more stable coins. If, if you choose to, and you can pay these things back at any point or a portion of them at any point, you can top up your pulse X. You can withdraw excess pulse X all the way to put yourself down by 110. If you wanted to, I don't suggest that. I don't suggest anything. Use the protocol how you want to, but you, you can put in pulse X. You can take pulse X away. You can mint stable coins. You can return stable coins. And you are the one that's in control of your own collateral health. And that has to stay above 110. And as an average for everybody in the system, it enforces 150% average across the whole system. Okay. That's for the liquidations part. Mm -hmm. Now, the and we're talking about the vault. The box up here where it says vault, that's where you would deposit some Pulse X and then tell it how many stable coins you want to mint. It's quite easy. Now, there's another risk for being in a vault, and that's called redemptions. And it's like the scary word in the community at the moment. Because I think there's a big lack of education what a redemption actually is um, and, uh, and how it works. So you heard me say that you can pay back your loan at any point or a portion of your loan. You, as an individual, have a debt and at any point, you can come back and pay back some of your debt if you want. But these stable coins end up all over the place. They end up on DEXs. They end up in pools here and pools there. And protocols scoop them up. And they're all over the place. So each of them has to um, still be able to pay back that debt. So essentially, anybody can take a stable coin and pay back some debt. So if RH Max has, you know, a debt position and I've got 10 stable coins in my possession and I wanted to pay back, I wanted to do what's called a redemption. I click a button, I deposit 10 PXDC, which burned themselves out of existence. And if he happens to be the lowest collateralized vault, it's going to pay back $10 worth of his debt and it's going to give me $10 worth of his pulse X. It's a wash. Okay. In normal circumstances, it's a complete wash. He had $10, $10 of his debt paid off. And remember, he already has those stable coins. So if he chose to, he could just go buy the Pulse X back. He's in the exact same position he, you know, he, he started. Um, the action of doing a redemption actually raises the collateral health of 
the ball that had the redemption done against them. It's it's really cool math. If you if you hmm. pay the portion and you remove the same portion from the collateral, you run the math and say, oh, it actually increases the collateral health. So it's good for the ecosystem. It's always driving the health a little bit healthier for those lower guys because redemptions always happen from the lowest vault up. All right. Now the reason that redemptions are necessary and will happen, but they're not necessarily something to always be scared of. There are risks involved, but is because each stable coin is essentially guaranteed. Just like if you have USDC, you hope that it's guaranteed that if you send that to Coinbase, they're going to give you a dollar's worth of fiat. Um, if you have a dollar's worth of DAI, um, and for whatever reason it's trading weird on, on a DEX, you're guaranteed in Maker that the Maker protocol is going to give you a dollar's worth of ETH for it. And the same with this. If you have one PXDC, um, if funky things are happening on a DEX because people are trading you know, stuff around a, a lot, you can come back into the protocol and the protocol promises, enforced in code, that it's going to give you $1 worth of Pulse X for that one PXDC. And it burns that PXDC and it gives you $1 for the Pulse X from the lowest collateralized vaults. That keeps the peg of the stable coin. That's one of the mechanisms that keeps the peg because there's always a guaranteed ARB. When people buy and sell tokens on an exchange, a decentralized exchange, they go up and down in value because the ratios change. Uh, the DEX doesn't know the difference between a stable coin and a meme coin or of hacks or this or that. All yeah. it knows is these contract numbers, there's this quantity of them, and this other contract number, there's this quantity of them. So if somebody is dumping some stable coins or something, the stable coins drop in value. They all do. USDC, it happens... To it, if somebody dumps a bunch, uh, USDL, PXDC, it doesn't matter. If somebody dumps a bunch of them, they go down in value. And there has to be an incentive to buy it back up. There's two ways that the community can profit from buying that up. The first way is simply buy one stablecoin with another stablecoin, and bam, you just, or you just repeg the price. You use both to balance each other, and you're in profit. So an example is if... If your 100 die will swap and give you 105 PXDC, you might want to conduct that trade because you just made five stable coins like that, right? And you help peg the price back to a dollar. You use two different stable coins to balance each other out. Now, we have a cool pool over in the PHUX protocol where it's a five stable coin pool, and it's, it's a balancer fork. And some of this happens naturally over there where they all balance each other out. Uh, but that is uh, a, a great place to conduct trades and have extremely good order execution. The pool that was created is called the Oracle and Bridge Pool. Uh, the gauges turn on next week. So not only will trading fees be earned, trading fees right now are netting 12.31% if you participate in this pool. With minimal, with like no impermanent loss, by the way, because we're talking about stable coins. You're just parking your stable coins in here. And then unless, unless one of these has a complete DPEG or something, which you've seen with USDC over a weekend once, um, you've never seen it with um, LUSD. You've never seen it with USDL. You sh will not see it with PXDC. It's always redeemable. Th these things paired together, some would say are pretty safe to be in this kind of pool. You're not really subject to impermanent loss like you are in other types of pools because they're all stable coins. So you can park stable coins in here and earn 12.31%. And next week when the gauge is turned on and the emission, the emission of the incentive PHUX token starts emitting, that number goes up. I don't know what it'll be. Could be 20%, could be 25%, could be just 13%. Total. I have no idea. Depends on how many people vote, how much participation, how much volume, how, how big your bag is of uh, the V Fox tokens. Um, but that number is going to go up. This pool has great order execution. You can you can swap quite a bit of one stable coin for the other, and, and, and this is designed to all start balancing each other out. Um, 
this is the best place to trade. Now you you can use um, if you were to go to uh, Pulse X. Pulse X is great as a Uniswap V2 uh, fork, which is not the best necessarily place to conduct a trade for stable coins. It's great for other tokens, but the way the X times Y equals K formula works is not necessarily great for stable coin pools. Um, so everyone needs to be aware of that. So anyway, we talked about one way to peg a stable coin value. Just buy it with the other stable coins. The other way is to buy a cheap stable coin that you see and go redeem it. So if you find cheap USDC, you can buy that and then go redeem it to Coinbase, right? You just made some money. Granted, you have to go back to TradeFi or whatever because you you have cash now, um, but which sucks, right? Okay, so what happens with something like Earn Protocol? You can buy a cheap stable coin. Let's say you find it. Well, shoot, it's trading at just under 98 cents right now. Well, when redemptions are live, you'd be able to buy that. And now you have two options. You can, uh, well, you can you can just simply use Dai or USDC or something like that and buy it and watch that value repeg itself and you profit. But the other way is simply just buy it with anything you want, and then redeem the PXDC back into the protocol, and you know that you're going to get a dollar for the Pulse X for each one of them. So that guaranteed one dollar for the Pulse X is what entices people to say that thing's ninety seven and a half cents. I know I'm going to get a dollar for it here in about two seconds when I click a redeem button and you just made, you know, two and a half percent, right? Minus the fee. And that's a half, it starts at a half percent to do a redemption. It ratchets up to prevent like huge volumes of redemptions from happening. Um, so I, I just want to talk about, ask a question on redemptions too, because I mean, that's a lot of people, familiar with liquidations that's what the whole focus has been with all the one protocols hey don't get liquidated hey don't get liquidated and then redemptions have came into the limelight uh in the last few weeks or two and what would you say to people who just you know if you if they just don't don't understand they feel even if they hear explain okay i get it get it how do i not get redeemed how do i avoid that if, you, I can if do? you don't if if you have a vault and you don't understand what a redemption can do to you my from the bottom of my heart my suggestion is do not have a vault there are other ways to participate in the ecosystem you can buy these stable coins on the open market and park them in the stability pool go liquidity provide earn rewards here and there wherever you want uh you can buy the earn token on the open market if you choose and stake them in here for the fees if redemptions scare you it's most likely because you don't understand them and if they still scare you or you don't understand them just don't have a vault there are other things that you can do in this protocol that are awesome but right? let's say let's say somebody kind of understands but they're a little scared based on mm -hmm. everything going on in the ecosystem what is, is there a best practice is there just a way to, is there anything they can do any knobs they can turn to be like okay i'm gonna at least be further down the line for redemptions like i want to I'm a, how can they avoid it? is there any way to avoid it like you would any similar ways such as liquidation sort of, sort of but not really when everybody's doing we got to fill stadiums jesse you got to help me fill stadiums here we got okay so listen listen you can redemptions will always occur um from the the least collateralized position up and a redemption is not the same thing as a liquidation. A redemption is somebody paying your loan off for you and taking an equal proportion value of your Pulse X, unless Pulse X is pumping really, really hard at that moment in time. Okay. So you may have, you know, a hundred dollars worth of your debt paid off, and you'll notice you're also short a hundred dollars worth of Pulse X for your vault. It's literally a wash at that point in time. Now, if some big whale guy comes in and he's buying up pulse X with uh, 14 million dollars during that period of time and the price has pumped uh you know we'll say 60 percent or something and you wish to have those pulse X it pumped um sorry you're not gonna buy the same quantity of coins back if that's what you wanted 
Um, but it could equally do the opposite because things go up and down, right? So you could be redeemed and you notice, oh, I was redeemed some or all or whatever. And you go back and you, wow, I just bought my PulseX back with my stable coins I have. And I have more than I started with. That happens too. Um, there's um, Hexacat over in the Liquid Loans chat. He's an admin. Um, he's, he gives some examples where he said like... Uh, the last he's been redeemed against several times because I guess he keeps himself pretty low collateral house compared to everyone else. And he said, but he always was able to buy back more pulse X than he started or more pulse rather than he started with. But that's a, uh, I mean, if we're in, if pulse X is going up, that gets harder, right? But if, we're yeah, if the thing is pumping really hard when you're redeemed, well, I, I mean, that risk is always there. You chose to take a loan. Okay, you're putting that value to work for you. You're making money in the stability pool, maybe. You're earning those earn tokens. You're staking those for the fees. You're earning a bunch of fees over here. Okay, you've got these positions where you're earning some value. And the risk that you're taking on is that if you're one of the lowest collateralized vaults, you could be redeemed against for like value for like value. You could have your debt paid off proportional yeah. to some whole sex taken. But if the price is pumping, which how often is that going to happen? You could get into this situation where, oh, okay. Now, now it's not even all your collateral. Look, you could have a million dollars worth of collateral and have a $500 loan, okay? The only thing that you would ever lose is that $500 for the pulse eggs. Mm -hmm redeemed against that's it you you the whole all of the rest of your collateral is always there it's always still yours nobody gets to take that away but you might have lost some opportunity cost hundred dollars or whatever or lost uh, like if you were to try to buy that back because the price was pumping a lot um and you're like oh i want that i really wanted that five hundred dollars worth of pulse x but i can't get it back because the price went up a lot or the price went down a lot and you now have, you know, buy $500 for the pulse and you have more coins than you started with. But all that excess is always yours. People, people think that one, a liquidation, they lose their entire vault, which that that's also not true. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think the concern is just, is just liquidations, redemptions in general. It's yeah, like redemptions, you, you open up redemptions. Um, let me correct what I said. With a liquidation, yes, you lose your entire vault because your vault is worth the same thing as what you've already minted, right? Plus 10%. With a redemption, people think that it's like the same thing as the liquidation. It's not. You don't lose your entire vault. You literally had somebody pay off your debt. And proportional to that, you had some pulse eggs taken, and you can buy that position back. Right. There are... Uh, some bots that are arbing a whole bunch of stuff on the chain constantly. Okay. They're arbing between Pulse X and PHUX and nine millimeter and liquid loans. And when our redemptions come on, these bots will likely use earn protocol as part of the source to, to do all of these, uh, these uh, um, arbitrage opportunities that are going across the chain. You'll never be able to stop that. And arbitrage is actually a good thing to balance out the prices of tokens to what they're supposed to be. But as users in this system, you have to be aware that if you're the lowest collateralized vaults, you could be redeemed against. But it's not the same thing as a liquidation, and it's not as bad. But there is the possibility that the price could be randomly pumping at that moment in time you were redeemed against. And then you're like, oh, I can't buy all those back again. But it's not your whole bag. Your whole The excess collateral is always yours. It's still there for you to claim. From from the user experience, though, it's like, in fact, if I were to imagine, okay, so, all right, I'm open up a vault, put this in, and then I think I have safe collateral or whatever. It gets redeemed, and now I'm like, oh, where'd my vault go? Okay, well, yeah, I have the collateral I took out, but at the same time, I just lost, you know, 30%, 40%. Like, that doesn't, doesn't feel good to the user. Like, how can I trust this thing? It's not that the protocol, not that there's a bug or issue or anything, but that's the that's the user experience maybe people have had with them in before. Yeah, because the chain pumped really, really fast. Um, and there were some redemptions at the same period of time. Now, how do you avoid a, a redemption? Mm -hmm. um, way number one, if this sort of thing scares you, do not have a vault. It's not as scary. For the people that understand it, it's really not as scary as, 
it sounds. But if it still scares you, don't go through crypto in fear. <laughs> Just don't have a vault. There's plenty of TVL in the system. Um, there's plenty of other opportunities to go purchase the stable coin and put it in the stability pool. Purchase the earned uh, um, the earned token, put them in the staking pool. Um, you can do all sorts of things. You just won't like be comfortable taking a loan. Okay. And that's perfectly acceptable. The other thing you can do is have your collateral health higher than, you know, the lowest vaults, right? What does that mean though? Because if everybody's doing it, if that's how we go through life using this protocol, if I'm trying to be healthier than you, and then you're trying to be healthier than me, and then I go, oh, I'm trying to be healthier than you again, then everybody's just constantly getting healthier because they're trying to get away from something they fear, which is a redemption. But it's not actually solving the problem. It's not um, making anybody safer because everybody's moving up together, and the thing literally goes from the lowest collateralized vault up regardless of where that point starts. Right. So like you can call this cascading. It's not it's it's like cascading, increasing health rates. And it's a little bit silly that everybody's doing that to each other and driving the, the health higher and higher and higher. And I think it's literally because people don't understand and they're scared of something that they don't necessarily need to be scared of. They need to understand the risks involved. But if it scares you, don't take a loan. And if we can get that through everybody's head, the system remains healthy and we'll see collateral health around three or 400% and hovering around there all the time. And it's, it's going to be great. I think that's the key is if, and again, just to clarify, so your collateralization ratio can help you avoid getting liquidated or redeemed. Is that correct? Correct. And the liquidation is much easy. It, it's really easy to manage your liquidation point. Uh, this thing literally we, we put in here um, a, where is liquidation price? Okay. If you have an open vault, it'll tell you the price that PulseX has to be for you to, to be liquidated. Okay. And um, you can easily tell, oh, I'm at 150% or I'm at 200%. I feel comfortable. And if you don't like it, you can add to, you can take away, so on and so forth. That's super easy to manage. What's hard to manage is, is somebody going to click the redeem button and I, am I lower than everybody else? And am I going to have some of my debt paid off and some of my pulse X taken away proportionally to that? That's what's impossible for you to manage. That's the other side of the equation where somebody else has the ability to well, redeem. You impossible you for you to manage directly. Control. Impossible for you to manage directly. But again, I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to take the fear of, I want to take a loan. I, I feel like I, I, the words redemption and liquidation, they make sense. Like I've watched the videos, I did all this stuff, but then I see people, you know, in other protocols or otherwise getting liquidated. Maybe they have a higher collateral ratio, all this stuff going on with, you know, I think liquid loans is making a bunch of changes and improvements and stuff there with that too. Mm -hmm. But just the whole, whole thing of, okay, I understand it works that way, but I want to be able to use this and not, not have that happen is the key just to have a higher collateral ratio than everyone else like is it just a race yeah. to yes if you have higher, yes if you have if you have higher collateralization level than everybody else chances are you're not going to be redeemed but caveat every single stable coin that's minted is able to be redeemed which means if everybody were to say you know what I don't like this protocol anymore. Uh, they could just unwind it by doing tons and like just redeeming every single stable coin that was ever minted. Okay. Um, not that that's going to happen. Okay. We have, um, let's see, how much of the percent is in the stability pool? We have PXDC in the stability pool, 88.3% of the stable coins in the stability pool. Um, those won't be used in this. Nobody's going to use those for to run a redemption. It doesn't make sense because uh, they'd have to withdraw from there. They're stopping earning any earn tokens. Then they run a redemption and get some pulse X. They pay a fee to do that, but now they're stuck with pulse X. 
now they're going to sell that back for some more PXDC to try and go back into the stability pool. They're going to eat some slippage and a fee on whatever decks they're using to try and get that PXDC to jump back into the stability pool. It just doesn't make sense. So that you can assume that most of that's going to always just stay in the stability pool. People may exit from time to time, but it's not like they're going to exit to go run a redemption. All right. Now, the other tokens in existence are what's on the liquidity pools. And uh, we should have taken a look at it a minute ago, but just a rough guess. I don't know. Two to three million stable coins in PXDC between in the in the pools in uh, PulseX and then PHUX. Because. Yeah. We'll just go with like be somewhere between two and three million stable coins. All right. So how many stable coins are liquid in people's wallets? Uh, we can look on chain, but we can let's just take a rough stab at six percent of them. The only redemptions that could ever occur would be say six percent of all the open debt. So you can kind of start to figure out well, how many open vaults are there and how much PXDC is liquid in people's wallets? Uh, we'll say six percent or eight percent. So let me put myself at least above. Out of all the debt in existence, which is 23, 22 and a half million, I want to be at this collateral ratio to put myself over being able to be redeemed. Right now, we don't have a thing for that. We haven't built a thing so you can look at that. We may, we may not. I have no idea. Okay. But you, you by knowing or, or taking some good guesses at what's liquid in people's wallets. And then thinking about the ratcheting fee as well to run a redemption, you can kind of place yourself in a level where you're not going to ever be redeemed. But if everybody's doing it, then nobody's doing it. If, because it goes from the bottom up. So if you were to do that, and I'm below you, and I'm also doing that, so I go above you, and then you do you see what happens? Yeah. And that's, what, that's kind of what's happened over at Liquid Loans. But it's literally because people don't understand this or they're not running the numbers like I'm talking about. Well, that's what I want to get into too is, is how, you know, again, I think they're making some improvements and stuff over there and otherwise, but people are probably asking, you know, I, we see redemptions aren't even able yet for power city, but mm -hmm. you know, Next how can, can people have faith that, you know, things are going to run, you know, smoothly with power city or is there differences or, or, or things that you all have, looked at and learned from or had to yeah. change from, from yeah. looking at things? So, so the biggest piece is this education piece that we, we just covered. All right. And understanding what a redemption actually does. Is it scary? Well, it can be if the price is running away. Right. Um, the other, like the other pieces is, is, is the Oracle price close to the spot price. That is a big deal. And you have to have those two prices close together. Otherwise there's just always an ARB opportunity that you, you don't, want to have there um so we've we've put like what you've seen on liquidity let me give an example of liquidity i think liquidity uses 15 minute windows right um and then well they use chain link and it uses a like a weird hour thing too but <clears throat> that's too long on pulse chain it's too long of a time period on pulse chain the gas prices are too low, which means the ARB opportunities are not being hindered by the gas. So every little price change of any token on chain, as long as it you can make more money than the gas it costs, you can run a redemption. So literally a 15-minute uh, report is, is too long. We've recognized this. We've poured over a ton of data. And what we've done is we've gotten our, um, our Oracle price really 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 like within blocks a handful of blocks of the um the spot price okay so that takes care of normal market conditions but again anybody can come into the chain and do a market buy of like 14 million dollars and what does that do right it drives the price up really really quick uh you don't necessarily see that same behavior on eth that behavior is cool for people who hold that token that just got pumped um but there are there can be like consequences of 
what if a redemption's run during that period of time and this guy just pumped the token a whole lot and I want to buy that back. Oh, but it pumped 40% and, hmm. and I wanted that. But remember, a redemption doesn't take your whole vault. All the excess collateral is still yours. It's not like it's not the same as a liquidation. So people do need to understand that. It's like you get beat up, but you're not dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm joking, but as I imagine that's how a lot of people look at it too. They're like, I really don't want this thing to happen. How you know? That's why I'm keep driving home this point of like, okay, collateral ratio, that's that type of stuff too. But yeah, market market forces. I mean, that's it's. Uh, I mean, are you are you nervous for uh for the nineteenth for the redemptions? Mm -hmm. It'll be it'll be interesting to see. I I have a guess in my head uh, what number may be um, used to redeem on day one. I mean, there there's been some dips in the price of PXDC, especially with redemption still being off. Uh, it's a little harder to maintain a peg when you can't do a, a redemption immediately. So there there's likely been some people who have seen these dips and bought it, and they're waiting to do a redemption. Um, I don't think it's a huge quantity. And proportional to the debt of $22.5 million, I think it's going to be just fine. I don't think anybody has anything to worry about. Um, yes, there will be redemptions. They're going to turn on. There's another side to this, y'all. There's a redemption fee. Who gets the fee? The stakers of the earned token. So if you're over there staking your earned token now, you can see that you're collecting uh, PXDC anytime somebody mints some. And starting on Tuesday... Anytime a redemption is run, you're also going to be earning Pulse X. So whatever you're making now, I can't say that it's going to like double. I, I don't think there's going to be equal amount of redemptions as um, as there are mints. It's possible. I, there should be less. But that number is whatever you're making over there now in the staking pool is going to go up. Hmm. And the core stakers over there, you know, the watt stakers in the core – they're also going to be collecting Pulse X starting on Tuesday. Hmm. Well, let's get into that. I mean, I, I, I just on the on the liquidation redemption. I just want to want to put that out there because I really think that's the piece that people are super concerned about. So I want to alleviate that and at least give people some information. But also this interface, I was telling you in the green room, man. Uh, you know, I've been playing around with it. Super easy to use. I know I don't have any vaults open, but if I did, you would see, you know, be able to adjust or close or uh, mm -hmm. see how much you're earning for in stability pool and, and staking all that stuff too. Uh, really great job on just being able to, I know what these buttons do when I click them. <laughs> I, I know how to adjust things on, Oh, this is cool. You know, Pulse X went up. Cool. Now I can, you know, if you know, you're able to take uh, more out and, and, or do other things with and stuff too. Let's pulse. People got Pulse X. How would they use, how would they use this protocol to, to make more money on their Pulse X? So you can click in here and you can click the vault area. You would approve the tokens and you would place some Pulse X in the vault and tell it how many stable coins you'd like to mint. And it'll show you your collateral health, you know, for whatever figures you put in there. And you can adjust the numbers to put yourself at a collateral health you like. All right. Um, once you confirm that transaction, you'll notice you have PXDC in your wallet. What do you do with it now? Well, you can go spend it on a meme coin and hope you don't lose it all. Nobody would recommend that to you. You can go buy something else cool with it. Yield arbitrage, or, Jesse. Yield arbitrage. Or or you could be smart and say, well, the thing that I like is already the Pulse X that I just locked in the vault. Let me not like leverage myself into buying like uh, some some meme coins where I could lose it all, right? Let me just keep the Pulse X locked in there. That's the speculative play that I like. And put this stable coin to work for me. And you can come in the stability pool and you can deposit your stable coins. When you do that, there's an emission right now. There's 31.4 million earn tokens left in this pool. Those things are emitting out at a decreasing rate forever. And the rate is like on a halving. So every year, half of what it was 365 days earlier. But it just slows down every single block. So right now it's emitting at the most. So sitting in there with stable coins earns you those earn tokens by just parking them in the stability pool. Now, the purpose of the stability pool is to absorb any liquidations that might occur. What would happen if there's a liquidation is 
proportional to everybody in this pool. Um, you're going to accumulate some pulse X and your stable coins are going to burn. Not all of them. Cause it like uses everybody in here to pay the debt, but sta some stable coins will burn and you'll pick up pulse X in its place at a 10% discount off the market price. So you actually are accumulating more value worth of pulse X than the stable coins that are minted. Some people like to immediately pull those out and go sell them back for more stable coins and lock in that, it's really a nine and a half percent profit immediately. Other people are happy to use it as a method to accumulate discounted pulse X. Um, the choice is yours. It's your pulse X. It's your stable coins in here. Do whatever you want with them. And it's your earn tokens that you're earning. What do you do with those earn tokens? You have to have earn tokens stake to earn the fees. Anytime somebody mints some stable coins, there's a half percent and it ratchets up actually. Uh, it could be as high as 5% at any given point, but it, typically it hovers around half a percent borrowing fee. So when somebody mints some stable coins, the, the fee for that, the PXBC goes to the stakers of the earn tokens in that third block down there. Okay. Also, there's a fee to run redemptions. So if there's any redemptions, if you're staking earn tokens, there's also the fees for that flow to the stakers of the earn token down in that third box down there. Okay. So it's, it's kind of cool because you can stability provide and earn some earn tokens, earn some pulse X. You can take those earn tokens, put them in the staking pool and you can earn the fees. And all of this is like a self-supporting ecosystem and it's all over collateralized. You're just there supporting the system, earning the fees. There's other ways to support the ecosystem. If you click on the utilities tab at the top, You'll see that we have a slow internet. There we go. Okay. PXDC, PulseX, LP staking. Earn, PulseX, LP staking. So if you were to go, and the links are here, by the way. If you were to go to PulseX and, and LP, PulseX, and PXDC together, you're going to get a PLP token in your wallet. All right. Go back. You then stake that, and you're going to earn an emission of those tokens. I misspoke the last couple of videos saying 42 days. It's actually 60 days of emissions for these liquidity pools. A benevolent entity overfunded these pools, made it good for 60 days. I love not benevolent entities. Not 42 days. Right? So 60 days is much cooler than 42 days of, of free rewards for people. Also on, um, you know, you, you, you joked about the meme coin part, but the yield arbitrage, I think is interesting here too. Again, advanced users know what you're doing or whatever, but if you're able to borrow on your, especially when, so yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. So mm -hmm. when things are going well, when Pulse X is going up and you have a vault and it's going, you know, you, you, you uh, open a vault, you, you have a certain collateral ratio, maybe you set it at 200%. And then Pulse X price goes up and now it's, oh, actually it's at 300 percent now. And then, you, you know, you, for example, you could take more from that. And then now you have more stable coins to go do something with. Um, mm -hmm. For example, on the Pulse X pools, I mean, there's plenty of obviously, you know, we talk to different liquidity providing and and stability pool and, and stuff like that, too. But if you look at the farms on Pulse X, oh, my gosh, these APR numbers have went up recently, haven't they? They, they are. Wow. Wow. Right. Wow. So. Um, you think some people will be making plays around, uh, you know, especially since ink is popular again, um, uh, you know, the ink pulls or the pulse X, uh, pulse pull stuff like that. Um, kind of, you know, take, taking it out. Okay. Pulse X price goes up, take more out, put it in, put it into a farm. And then that sort of, you know, what is, I mean, I guess kind of like the haunted strategy, like some, somewhere in that realm type of thing. You could, I mean, there's risks in doing that. Right. So if you put your, if you don't want to sell your pulse X for one of these tokens, to get, that you want to farm with you absolutely could just collateralize your pulse x mint some stable coins use that to come buy one of these coins and farm over here okay and when you get tired of farming over here you pull out your um your lp you reacquire some pxdc and you go pay back your loan and you still have your pulse x plus any rewards you made while you're farming over here whatever percent it was what if ink paid off your loan that'd be cool right? yeah. so, so you could absolutely do that there are risks in doing so and those risks would be if the value of your 
farming tokens goes down and then you can't buy back the same the quantity of uh, pxcc you'd like to pay back as much of your loan as you'd like to right but again if these coins go up in value then maybe you're just making money over here um and when you withdraw your positions you can buy back you can easily buy back your pxdc and still have a whole bunch of extra free coins that you have now because it didn't cost you as much uh to buy back your stable coins so you have access now and go pay back your loan or whatever mm -hmm. or keep doing the system there's risks both directions things can go up things can go down you could really you you could lose it all technically like if you minted some stable coins and you blew it on a bad call and not only did you lose those stable coins but you don't have a way to pay back your loan now you could pull you can withdraw your excess collateral if you're if all of a sudden you're like oh man i messed up like i can't withdraw uh, uh my entire stack but i can withdraw anything over 110 percent right you could do that and then just forget about that wallet if you wanted to that's one choice um but the risk is literally you could just lose your stable coins and not be able to pay back and like you're liquidated and you lost all your money right it's like leveraging yeah it, it's, uh, it's not the safest no. play the safest play is to mint stable coins and just park them in the stable coin places right the stable coin pairs the stability pool th those are the safest things you can do so you're always ready to pay back your loan if you want to and the market conditions too for example i mean what what we hope happens is price go up um how different is it using it you know it's in, in a you know bull market versus sideways bear market that kind of thing is it you know price goes up again you have more collateral you're you know uh, perhaps if your collateral if your collateral ratio goes up you're safer from liquidations redemption stuff like that yeah. is this is this the time is, like is there is there when is the time to when is more the uh, less and, and more risky time to open vaults and stuff is it like you know, the beginning of a bull market the top of a bull market to bear like what are what are the different uh risks and stuff you you would you would come into play there um there's different sorts of risks for different times and there's different strategies for everybody you will see people that choose to under collateralize um during the bull market or when they think the bull market's gonna top out I, I literally watched that happen with a with a vault where um when the pulse x price pumped a whole lot the other day all right i watched a vault that was very safely collateralized like I think they put themselves down to like 120 percent or something, pretty close to the top. And I was like, "Oh wow, this is interesting. Let me watch this fall." That guy did that on purpose, and he did it on purpose as a stop loss. He said, "You know what? If the price moves down 20 percent, I'm going to get liquidated, but I just secured all these stable coins in my wallet." He literally used it as a stop loss, and the price retraced, and that guy did the right move. He he took a chance by under like putting a pretty low collateral health after a giant run up. That move is not for everybody. It is a super advanced move. I would not suggest it. Um, but that's what that guy did. There's other people that say, um, well, I would be more comfortable being lower collateral health during the beginning of a bull market because as the value of the collateral goes up, it's just going to keep increasing my collateral health and i'll be able to mint more along the way the entire time so it's like it, there's literally two completely different schools of thought and it's healthy that the ecosystem have both types of all sorts of people using it for their own purposes that's okay there's no one um glove fits everybody in this protocol you can use it however your heart desires is it harder to use it or, or i guess more risky to use it you know, for example, uh, you know, a lot of people, if they want to get liquidity and not sell at the at the top, if they're able to, you know, if their plan revolves around that, hey, I'm going to take a portion of crypto. If I feel like this is the top, I'm going to, you know, take it out in some way. Hey, loan's an option. 
is it riskier then because if the price goes down after that you got to keep you know you, you risk the liquidation part you got to keep you know collateral ratio up versus well, there's you know, people like who try to there's people who try to time the tops and time the bottoms and what this protocol could allow somebody to do is essentially have unlimited upside potential and downside 10 percent um you know loss risk so you're the gamble of, of of having a vault here is one again you can always collateralize yourself at whatever safety level you want to but if the value of your pulse x gets within 10 percent of the stables you minted you're going to lose that pulse x that's a 10 percent loss right okay that's your downside risk there the upside is unlimited, however, because the price of Pulse X could go up 2, 3, 10, 100X, 500X. Guess what? Those coins are still, they still belong to you. They're still yours. You can still withdraw those. You can mint additional stable coins off of that excess value. So you see how, like, you're putting some value to work for you. The downside risk is if you let it get down to 110%, which is fully manageable by you. Um, the other risk is if you're redeemed against while well, there's a big pump, whatever that level of pump is, uh, the you may not be able to buy that amount of pulse X back, but you also have unlimited potential. Um, so like there's risks, but there's also rewards in this protocol and everybody has to make their own decisions. I think that's the cool part to just to emphasize too is when you open the vault um, and you you know you take the you, you collateralize it however and the price goes up I mean maybe some people that go oh, the price goes up now I have that much more to pay off in the future I don't want price to go up because now I got to pay that much more off but actually you know it, it, it the price goes up means you can either take more collateral or you can still pay it back and get those get those coins back even if the price went up is that right? Yeah, even if price went up. I mean, so you could, let's say you have a vault, price goes up of your collateral, maybe it goes up 2x. Um, and you're like, wow, I didn't like having, now you can mint more stable coins and just keep minting stable coins behind the price going up. Cool. Or maybe you're just like sweating bullets because you're in a vault and it scares you for some reason. And you say, oof, uh, I'd rather not have a vault no big deal withdraw your excess collateral go buy some stable coins off the open market pay back your vault or withdraw your existing stable coins from any wherever you put them and pay back your vault and go about your business it, i mean the choice is yours you can use this protocol however you want